let's discuss system today what is system in signals and systems we are studying signals and systems so what is system in signals and system we have so many definitions for system but in system signals and systems in our course of study system is defined as a process or i shouldn't say define it can be viewed as a process that does transformation transformation of what transformation of an input signal into a into an output signal that is very different from the input signal so what it does is let this be a system it means that we have an input signal let's say x the system transforms this input signal into another signal that is called our output signal so system is considered as a process or it this process causes the system to respond in such a way that an input signal is transformed into another signal that is called the output signal clear now we have two types of signals continuous time and discrete time similarly we'll have two types of systems one which is continuous time system and second which is discrete time system what is a continuous time system see if our input signal is continuous and the system responds in such a way that we get continuous time output signal it is called a continuous time system clear we have input signal that is continuous time signal and we have output signal which is continuous time signal so that type of system is called continuous time signal and if we have a system in which we have discrete input and the system results in transforming this input discrete time signal into a discrete time output signal this is called a discrete time system very simple so this is the basic definition of system then we have interconnection of systems how are systems connected there are several ways because you know we don't have standalone systems we have several systems interconnected to form a larger set of system that actually performs uh, some real time work okay for example if you have a music system there are so many systems inside it inside that system that actually transforms the input so let's consider a music system let's consider a music system even at its basic level if you talk of basic level what you expect you expect let's say we have a dvd uh, cd uh, based system so we'll insert a C, insert this cd into the system so we'll have first of all a mechanical system to get to this cd enters into the system C, uh, we are able to exit the uh, cd then we have read device reading device for example we have we have devices to read the uh, whatever is written in the cd so there is a system which is reading device then it creates certain signal let's say this is first signal let's say this is a continuous time signal now but when we are considering a cd it will be a digital signal so we have a digital signal here discrete signal coming out of this reading device then you have an amplifier that will amplify it then you might have you know frequency synthesizer so that you are able to select and deselect certain frequencies based on your test taste then you may have some power amplifier power amplifier to match it to the you know load a large speaker so there are several systems these all are systems so in a practical real time applic in real time application practical application we have systems that have several systems interconnected inside it or a set of several interconnected systems constitute a, a real practical system so they can be con um, connected in series that is called cascaded cascaded series connection like this system 1 let this be system 1 it is connected to system 2 and then we have the output so this is a series connection system 1 connected to the output input is coming to this system 1 output of this if this is x1t is fed into the input of the second system and then final output we receive the final output this is called cascaded series connection okay then we can have system systems which are connected in parallel like this is system 1 and this is system 2 they are connected in parallel 
so this is a parallel system we can have a parallel plus series we can have a third system in series to this output so these are the different possibilities that systems are interconnected then we have feedback systems for example we can have feedback system input is coming to this part then going to system then it is the output and from output what we can do we can have a feedback system which is interconnected to the input this is feedback feedback system this is the let um, this is system one it can be an amplifier and this can be a feedback network so this is called system in feedback system with feedback so these are the different possibilities with which we can have systems okay so when the basics of system is clear let's understand certain properties of system <coughs> but before that let's understand what uh, we are saying a system is a very simple example you know this this is v let's say vs this is source this is resistor and this is capacitor okay let this be r this be c this is basically vc let the current be i okay so you can say it is what it is vs minus vc by r this voltage minus this voltage by r and since this is a capacitor we know it this current will be equal to c if capacitor is capacitance of the capacitor is c this will be c dvc by dt so we can put it here that is c rc dvc by dt is equal to vs minus vc okay <clears throat> let's put vc at one place so we can write like this <clears throat> rc dvc by dt plus vc is equal to vs now see vc is we can take uh, this is this as input this is input vs and this is output so we have a relation between input and output so we can say that this is a system in which we are our input is this vs and at the, the output is vc and we have this system continuous time system that is actually transforming this signal into this signal with this function so this is the process that is being done by the system over this input signal this is the meaning of system okay so now we see the first property of system altogether we will see six different properties of a system first property is whether a system is with memory or is the system memoryless this is the first property see if first of all we consider memoryless system memoryless system if the output of a system i am giving you the definition if the output of a system at any time let's say t is dependent only on the input signal at that time that is let's say with some it is dependent on this only or in case of discrete signal xn results in yn here we can represent like xt results in yt that is the signal is the output signal is not dependent on any signal on any previous signal any previous input signal that is t minus t1 t minus t2 it is not dependent on any other signal if this was our let's say this is our uh, input signal so at t equal to t1 whatever be the value of this our output is dependent on this only that is y at t1 is dependent on x at t1 only it is not dependent on x at 0 or x at this point or this point it is dependent on this point only then it is called memory memory less uh, system for example we have a resistive network let's say this is v this is r so i is what i is basically v by r so whatever be if the if v is your input whatever be uh, input at any time output will be dependent on that only in this resistive network it has nothing to do if this is let's say this is a ac circuit so i will be vs by r only it will depend on that instantaneous value of voltage only nothing else so this type of system is memoryless second is system with memory so similar to this definition a system which has memory is a system which is dependent on the value of the input signal at that moment and at 
other values of input signals also that is before that that is if the output is dependent if this is input and this is your t1 if the value of output is dependent from 0 to t1 of this that is y at t1 is dependent on let's say from t equal to 0 to t1 of xt if this is the case that is it is not dependent only on this point it is dependent how the signal went from this to this that system is with memory it is called a system with memory okay for example a very simple example we just saw uh, capacitor uh, circuit rc circuit this one v vs r c what is the you know i is c dv c by dt so if you want to see what is vc what it will be <coughs> it is minus infinity to t i 1 by c i dt so it is not dependent on the value of the current at time t it is dependent on the value of the time from minus infinity to t this type of system is having a memory okay similarly for discrete systems if we have a yn like this it, it, it is xn plus x n minus 1 or n minus 2 then <coughs> it is dependent on two signals signal at n and signal at n minus 1 so this type of system has memory so this is the first property of a system that it may have memory or it may be memoryless okay the second property of a system is called invertibility what is invertibility invertibility of a system invertibility it means a system has an invertible system also so that the original signal can be retrieved back that is if we have xt entering this system s giving output yt then we should have a system invertible of this where when we put yt we are able to retrieve back xt this is the meaning of invertibility in case of continuous time it is t in discrete this is n so you'll think why we'll need this if we have transformed a signal into another signal why do we need to have the system the original signal back there's no logic to it because we have for some reason we have transformed a signal to this why we would like to have invertible system of that it is required and it is required more often than you think very simple example example is your communication system communication system what you do in a communication system whether it be uh, continuous time or discrete time signal what you do you have a message that is the input signal your message is your input signal okay so you have a big system first of all what you do the first process is when you have an input signal you actually modulate it okay then you send it through a channel i'm giving a very simple diagrammatic explanation to this modulation then channel then you receive it okay after modulation what you do you transmit you transmit through the channel then you receive and when you receive the channel you demodulate it okay and then you have the signal back if your signal was xt it is xt again this was xt you modulated you have a system when you change xt to let's say yt then you changed you your yt signal uh, you went from this point to this point from transmitter it went up to the receiver that is maybe an antenna was a transmitter then through air it reached the receiver antenna so you <coughs> here you receive it then you have a system which is invertible of this this is the property of invertibility so the process is reversed modulation now here what you do you demodulate and you retrieve back your signal so this is the property of a signal to recreate an original signal from the output signal okay third property of a system is called causality we say a system is causal when it depends on when the output signal depends on the value of the present input signal and uh, signals input signals up to that time that is in we saw just saw let me write it causality we just saw what was this vc was 1 by c then you have minus infinity to t i dt so 
up to t from here from minus infinity to t so if we have such a system we say the system is causal otherwise it is not a causal system okay a corollary to it will be it does not anticipates future values of the signal that is you cannot you cannot say that yt is dependent on xt when the system is causal you say yt is dependent on xt and xt minus 1 this is a causal system it is dependent on uh, pre present signal and previous signal but you cannot say y x t plus 1 that is in the next moment what the value of the input will be you cannot have anticipation that is not a causal system okay we have non causal systems where we anticipate the future values of the input signal and based on that we actually we have feedback type of system where we uh, try to check our output signal but that is not a causal system a causal system a system which is a system which depends on its present value and its uh, earlier values earlier values of the input signal the fourth property of a system is called stability it is one of the most important properties of a system what is the meaning its meaning is what is the meaning of stability of system if the input signal is bounded if the input signal is bounded what what is the meaning of bounded signal that is if we have a signal xt like t so x t plus 1 will be t plus 1 it cannot be 1000 t so this is bounded that is with small increase the, the signal does not diverges so that type of signal is called bounded signal that is with small increase you have small increase in the output also so if the input signal is bounded the output system is also bounded output system is also bounded this is the meaning of stability let's understand it for example i am rubbing it let's say this is a this is r this is v so i will be <coughs> i is v by r so if you have 10 percent increase in v you will have 10 percent increase in i for a 10 percent increase in v you cannot have 100 thousand percent increase in uh, i so the system is stable or if a car is moving on a road okay a car is moving on a road if you increase the acceleration by 10 percent let's say then velocity should increase by 5 to 15 percent or some bounded value why why this is bounded because you have a friction force here which is acting on the body when acceleration is increased it does not means if you increase the acceleration by 10 percent your speed will go from 40 to uh, 4000 kilometers per hour it won't go why because the system is bounded bounded by frictional force if this force was not there the um, system would have been unbounded so stability is a must whenever we have a system we try to achieve stability we try to achieve stability with respect to different um, different aspects for example if let's say this is your vs this is r and this is c you know the value of i you know i is equal to c dvc by dt okay stable means once you give i1 let's say the vc is vc1 then tomorrow also when you give i1 it should be vc1 only third day also for i1 it should be vc1 only it should not change it should not change with time it should not change with temperature or even if it changes that should be bounded within limits what I am trying to say is if today's temperature is 20 degrees Celsius and you have VC1 for this. Tomorrow, if the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, the change in VC, if this is VC1 dash, if the change in VC should be very, you know, approximately equal to zero, very low quantity, it should not be very high. For example, for I1, if this was 1 volt at 25 degrees Celsius, then at 20 degrees Celsius, for I1, it should not go to 100 MPS. It should be 1.1 or 1.05 MPS. So that is the meaning of stability that should be stable with respect to time, with respect to temperature and with respect to other parameters that is surrounding the system. Now the fifth property is called time invariance. Time invariance. You must be hearing of 
the term linear time invariant system so this is time invariance it may seems that the characteristics should not change with time that is actually stability time inv invariance means that if x for xt if the output is yt then for xt minus t0 your output should be yt minus t0 that is the property should shift if there is a shift in time in the input the output should also shift by that property that only that is if this is your xt for which your output was let's say this let's say this is your output then if you have the input like this then your output should be like this also only okay this is the meaning of uh, time invariance that if yt is for xt then yt minus t0 for xt minus t0 similarly for if xn results in yn xn minus n should result in this this is the meaning of time invariance in signals and systems okay don't think time invariance means that with changing time the system stability should be maintained time invariance means this okay and finally we'll see the sixth property that is linearity of a system so that finally we'll understand what is linear time invariant causal stable system so linearity so what is a linear system linear system is a system which possesses the property of superposition and what it is first the property of superposition means first additive that is if yt1 was in a resp response to xt1 and yt2 was in response to xt2 okay input and output then additive property means if we feed the system with xt1 plus xt2 our output should be yt1 plus yt2 that is if the input signal is weighted some uh, sum of some signals the output should be the weighted sum of response of those input signals xt1 xt2 should result in yt1 plus yt2 okay discrete also nothing xn1 xn2 yn if we feed this with xn1 plus xn2 we should get yn1 plus yn2 okay this is the additive property and the second property is called scaling property second property of linearity is scaling property what it is if xt1 results in yt1 then a into xt1 should result in a into yt1 this is if the input signal has been scaled up by multiplying factor of a the output signal should also be multiplied by that factor a this is scaling so if a signal possesses these two properties first was additive and second was scaling so if a system produces um, possesses these two properties we say the system is linear a very simple example will be this r let's say this is r this is v so our current will be v by r if our new voltage is let's say v1 plus v2 then your current will be v1 plus v2 by r so we the additive property is there if we have multiplied this by let's say k we have a voltage that is kv our output will be kv by r so this system possesses linearity this system is linear okay this is clear we'll see some examples and then we'll understand this let's say we have a system <clears throat> let's say we have a system where yt is equal to t xt let's see whether it is linear or not we know y 1t will be t x 1t and y 2t will be t x 2t let's say we have third signal x 3 which is a combination of these two input signal a x 1t plus b x 2t you remember how we express uh, linear dependence of systems so a and b are certain scalars so we have a signal x3 t and that is this what will be the value of y3 t y3 t from here will be t x3 t so this is a t x1 t plus b t x2 t now you can see this and this this is equal to we can say a into y1 t this is y1 t plus b into y2 t 
So, for another signal, the output is clearly depends on, uh, clearly defines the input signal. That is, this is a linear system. You can see, x3, y3t is exactly what we have in the defining uh, expression. So, this is a linear system. Okay. But what if our signal was this? Let's say x square t. Then y1 t will be equal to x1 square t and y2 t will be x2 square t. Now, similar to that, let's have x3 t which is x a x1 t plus b x2 t. Okay. So, ideally we should have y3 t equal to x3 square t. Let's see whether we get x3 square t or not. y3 t will be equal to x3 see this is this is okay okay we should get our result should be a into y1 t plus b into y2 t then we'll say it is linear let's see this is this x3 square t that is this square plus this square that is a square x1 square t plus b square x2 square t plus twice a b x1 t x2 t okay this you can see is y1 t. So, this is a square y1 t plus b square y2 t plus twice a b x1 t into x2 t. Now, you can see these are scalar. So, a square b square is not very significant. We can say k1 and k2. If this was linear, then this should have been up to this only. If this was up to this, we would have said that the system is linear, but we have another term. So, the system is not linear. The first we discussed TXT that was a linear system, but X square T is not a linear system. So, I think you understand what is a linear system and what is a non-linear system. So, we have discussed six different properties of a system. These are for basic understandings. When we will get into, when we will get deeper into linear time invariant systems, things will be more clear to you. Okay.